Hello and welcome to Pause for Thought on the second Sunday in Advent. Wherever you are, however you join us, whatever life is asking of you just now, we pray that as we share together you might know something of the nearness of God's love and the realness of his presence. To share together in our Advent candle liturgy. God said, I have heard and I will act. We wait in hope for the Lord, our help and our shield. Today we light this second candle and think about where hope touches our lives. Lord, when it is hard to see the way, give us hope. When it is difficult to sift the truth, give us hope. When life is draining, give, give us hope. hope. Amen. Amen. Everywhere, God, your spirit moves and we worship you. We worship you because we hear your call moment by moment. We live with an awareness that you constantly seek our company, inviting us to draw near to remember that we are known and named, gifted and precious. All over the world, this day your spirit moves as she moves every day. May we travel alert to your gifts even when they come in unexpected ways, through unusual connections. We come with open minds and soft hearts. We come expectant of meeting with you. We come knowing that you have called us and will make a way. Amen. And now for a poem from the book With an Open Eye from Tom Gordon. So much, so much to get ready, so much to prepare. So much to set up and to plan. So much to provide for. So much to work out. So much to arrange when I can. So much to fit in when there's too little time. So much that's expected again. So much to accomplish. So much to create. So much to uphold and maintain. So much to be done as it's been done before. So much that's the same as last year. So much of tradition. So much that's the norm, so much though it feels insincere. So much, so I'll need to take time out to think. So much, yes, I'll try to unwind. So much, how important the message to know. So much when there's meaning to find. 
So much when there's purpose I've still to recall. So much with more wonder to see. So much of the mystery, insight and love. So much and it's all given to me. Our reading today comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 1 to 8. The preaching of John the Baptist. This is the good news about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It began as the prophet Isaiah had written. God said, I will send my messenger ahead of you to clear the way for you. Someone is shouting in the desert, get the road ready for the Lord. Make a straight path for him to travel. So John appeared in the desert, baptising and preaching. Turn away from your sins and be baptised, he told the people, and God will forgive you your sins. Many people from the province of Judea and the city of Jerusalem went out to hear John. They confessed their sins and he baptised them in the river Jordan. John wore clothes made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist and his food was locusts and wild honey. He announced to the people, The man who will come after me is much greater than I am. I am not good enough even to bend down and untie his sandals. I baptise you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. Sometimes when you hear the same thing over and over, it starts to become less and less meaningful. For instance, when you first hear about items in a sale, you might think, wow, that's amazing. But when the 10th sale in 10 months comes around, it loses its appeal. I'm reminded of those times when, as a boy, watching the same thing for the umpteenth time, someone would say, not this again. We've seen it so many times, we could act in it. That sentiment made me pause and wonder. If this is how it can be for some in the run up to Christmas as well. There's nothing new. We've heard it all before. So much of the message sanitised, cleaned up, tweified. And then onto the stage bursts John the Baptist, the forerunner, the herald, calling out good news. Get ready. Repent. You might question how those three phrases belong together. How is John's message of getting ready and repenting good news? It's good news because it gives us an opportunity to press pause, to refocus on what truly matters, to break out of established ruts, of practices and traditions that we're simply doing out of routine, to rediscover Delight instead of duty, energy instead of exhaustion, peace instead of anxiety, grace instead of stress. John's message says, yes, you can get off the religious hamster wheel. There is another way. Everything can be made new. As we hear God's word, trust it and act on it. And repent, how might that be good news? 
it's good news because it reminds us as heroes that we're invited into a relationship in which we are transformed more and more into the likeness of Jesus. Hopefully learning along the way to see ourselves increasingly how Jesus sees us, full of potential, regardless of how far away we feel. As Leonard Cohen sang, forget your perfect offering, there's a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. Perhaps too, for followers of Jesus, that's how the light gets out through our vulnerabilities. John's message too is good news because it reminds us that we are messengers and not the message, that we are called to be faithful ambassadors entrusting the results to God. Late one night, a salesman drove into a strange city and tried to get a room in a hotel. There is no room, the clerk informed him. Disappointed, he started to leave when another man offered to share his room with him. Gratefully, the traveller accepted this expression of kindness. Just before they turned in for the night, the one who had extended the hospitality knelt and prayed aloud, naming the stranger by name and asking for the Lord to bless him. When they woke the next morning, he told his guest it was his habit to read the Bible and speak with God at the beginning of each day, and inquired if he would like to join him. Yes, came the reply. And as the two made ready to go their separate ways, they exchanged bis business cards. The story goes that the person who shared his room with a stranger was a secretary of state. But beyond being secretary of state under a human leader, the man who invited the stranger into his space was an ambassador for Christ. I wonder as you journey this week, what signs of God's presence will you receive and what signs will you communicate? What opportunities to share God's light will you be alert to and offer to others as we reflect on that invitation? We listen to our second hymn, Light of the World. Let us pray. Light 
of the world be present to those who feel lost, stuck, unable to go forward or back. Accompany those who find themselves in rough places. Those seeking forgiveness. Those yearning for an apology. Those feeling beyond love. Remember those who wait, that in your patience they might find strength. Those waiting for healing, those waiting for restoration. Those waiting in the depths of the valleys, abiding in the shadows, and we pray for all who seek to be ambassadors for you, for all in positions of responsibility. For all who communicate, God of blessing, release your love and light more and more, and where possible, use us. And so hear us as we pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. God of light and life, we go to follow your light and in your going we trust ourselves to your nurturing to your upholding and your strengthening. And in all things, may your blessing enfold each of us, those whom we pray for, and those whom we ought to love, with those we do love, this day and every day. Amen.